It's Sam Rockwell month in June, where we review all Sam Rockwell stuff. This is a really lame song, and I'm trying a new thing to put clips in my videos. So I am trying this out to show you that he dances a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome to Smirking Gun Reviews. We're uh, this time in uh, the channel. We're doing Sam Rockwell Month. This all this month, where we review all of Sam Rockwell's movies. We've already done one of them, and now we are back with another one. And that movie is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's right. Sam Rockwell was in this movie. He plays Head Thug. It's a movie from 1990. I got a lot to say about it, so let's just jump right into the movie, shall we? All right. All right, so hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here at Smirking Gun Reviews. Finally, after all these years, 1990, Jesus Christ, like almost 30 years ago, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came out. And yes, this is Sam Rockwell month. And so I was as surprised as anybody to realize that Sam Rockwell was in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I had no idea. Uh, and when it said head thug, I was like, okay, what's that going to mean? I mean, I guess I like kind of self-explanatory, but like what kind of level of role was he going to be in this movie? And, and it's not big, it's not big, but it's not as small as I thought it was going to be either initially. Once so we were introduced, I was like, oh, that's it. But no, he's actually in this movie, uh, quite a bit. And so since this is about Sam Rockwell, uh, we're going to just go right ahead to, to like kind of show some of his scenes and then uh, we'll talk about the whole movie as a whole after that. So let's get to the clips. So like initially, he's just here in this beginning scene where they're chasing April O'Neil. And he ends up being one of the guys that they fight. He's like right there. Um, and it's kind of hard to see on this like TV I have. But he, he just, he, they get fought and then he gets, he's one of the guys that's like in the background. So you figured, oh, well that's it. He's just in this one little scene. But no, he's also in this scene where they introduce the, the underground punk, you know, uh, kids, you know, stealing for the shredder and everything. And they, <laughs> it's all pretty hilarious, but he's here kind of giving people exposition about what's going on. And there, yeah, like, He's, he pulls out the cartons of cigarettes, you know, you guys want smokes? You can do anything you want. The kid's like, you got cigarettes? So, yeah, he's, he does the bit of showing around. And then, so then now they have this scene where Casey and them are trying to get Splinter out. And they're talking about, like, they've just whooped everybody's ass. And Casey's, like, talking to him. And, you know, hey, we got to stick together. We're a family. And so he, he's basically here to be the, the guy that was a criminal that was brought in as, to the gang and, sh and Shredder gets to, you know, or Splinter gets to tell him about how, you know, this isn't the way to do things and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, you're just a bunch of punks, you know. And then at the end of the movie, basically, Sam is like, you know, talking to the cop, or, you know, that's like the one that looks like, uh, that sounds like... Uh, Oh God, Jackie Gleason. Yeah, like he, he would be a good Jackie Gleason. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much the extent of his role in this. But uh, we'll talk about that more. So one second. All right, so yeah, that's the extent of his role in the film. But it's, you know, going from Clown House to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles isn't too bad uh, for an actor. And yeah, it's a pretty thankless role. But it also got me able to talk about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a movie that I haven't seen in over 20 years, probably. And when I knew I was going to review this, I didn't know if I was going to put this on my final viewing series or not. But actually, <laughs> I can't believe, I really can't, I really, really can't believe that this movie is still as good as I, re I remembered it. And I'm glad it's been 20 years since I've seen it now that, it, that I've gotten to have all this time in between to check it out again. And I thought, this is going to be stupid. And it still holds up. In fact, I think I like it more now than when I... I'm sure initially as a kid I was like, Ugh! because, you know, back then, 14, 15-year-old me, we went to see this at the Dunes Theater in Zion, Illinois, a little Art Deco theater that I'm not even sure is still there. I think it is. Um, and I had to sit, like, opening night, 
I had to share a front row corner seat, share a front row corner seat with another kid to watch the movie. I remember that night like vividly and just like still not caring how close we were to the screen or anything. It was just the best. It was so awesome. And I mean, it's so weird that, I, that those are the things I remember. So many of my memories are fondness of going to the movies. But yeah, so we, I mean, I, this movie was part of that year, like that time period and, and it was everywhere. And here's the other thing. This movie is so faithful to the source material. There's no subverted expectations here. There's none of that stuff. And, and as dated as it is in, a, in, in many ways, it's crazy that we have to look to the past to see the real good stuff. Like we can remember things being cheesy. We can remember things being not accurate sometimes, but this is really, really faithful. The people who made this gave a shit. They play it serious. You know, this is ridiculous. This story is ridiculous. I know this. I mean, I, I liked it when I was a kid and I was just like, oh my God, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like you put those four words together and it just becomes a, an awesome thing. And yeah, it all is to sell action figures and toys and everything. It is. It's a commercial. It was Transformers. The problem is, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, to me, has had a much six more successful, like, long-term uh, respect from most people. There's some dark times in the 90s with some stuff, you know, but like, and the, the Michael Bay movies aren't that great. But overall, like, I feel like Transformers isn't as highly regarded as the adaptations go as to as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, yeah, the movies have gone downhill, but I mean, there's something about them that I don't feel like is ruined. There's so many different cool iterations of the turtles, whether you're reading them or watching them on TV, that they just don't have that kind of stain that I feel Transformers has on it now. But... I'm not dissing Transformers, by the way. Just I'm just Michael Bay movies pretty much ruined the, the you know me ever really wanting to see them on screen again. Uh, even Bumblebee, which I thought was pretty good uh, for what it is, uh, it still didn't completely bring me all the way back. It just showed me what they could have been doing from the beginning. Um, but back to this though, I mean, it's funny. The script is good for what this is. This is way better than it needs to be. And I'm sure that critics probably ripped this to shreds back then, but as a 14, 15 year old kid, who, what the fuck did I give a shit about what those people say? You know, and I didn't, I not even, and I watched Siskel and Ebert when I was a kid because I was obsessed with movies back then. I wanted to know what two grown ups said about it. Um, but it's just good. And like I said, it's funny. Oh my God, forgiveness is divine, but never pay full price for, ha you know, full price for late pizza. Oh my God, like just. Mikey is, I, has become kind of like my favorite. I used to hate Mikey. I liked Leonardo. Um, but Mikey in this, I forgot how funny he was. Like when I was a kid, I was like, mm, Mikey's not, I don't really like Mikey that much. But watching it now, all these years later, <laughs> I love him, man, in this movie. He's like the real whack, wacky one in this. Like Raph's the brooding one, Don's the smart one, Leo's the leader, and, you know, and Mikey's fucking crazy. <laughs> and they got to make a Wheel of Fortune reference that's not dated because Wheel of Fortune's still around and Nelvana is still doing her job. There was a moonlighting joke in here that was like, that's going to go way over kids' heads that watch it today. And that's the thing. You can still show kids this movie that have never seen. Like, if kids don't know what Ninja Turtles are, if you want to introduce them to Ninja Turtles, you introduce them to the movie first. I think you do the movie before even the first cartoon. Because then if you see, show them the movie, they'll get used to that look. And so the cartoon will look, you know, will look like something cooler. That's what I think. Because I think there was a disadvantage of going from the cartoon to the, to the movie. Because everything just was all like slim and, you know, pe putting people in suits is bulky and, and hard to do. Um, and all the stuff that I, that I thought would annoy me like all these years later don't like the whole emotional thing like Raph always screaming and like no and yeah and Splinter and and I thought April O'Neil would suck and no she's great and Elias Cotias is Casey Jones okay he 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 was always going to be awesome but I, I like seeing him in these roles because he's so not this kind of actor anymore 
Like the, he's never played Casey Jones like since what Ninja Turtles three, the one where they went back in time. But he's usually very serious, and you so getting to see him like early in early kind of in his career, be goofy and weird, and it's like man, I really wish that there had been more Casey Jones in, you know, the movies and stuff. So uh, that all is really holds up really well. Um, and just the general, like the puppetry from Jim Henson's people. Oh my God. Just so great. And I, even though you can sometimes like, there's, there's a scene where Donatello's mouth just keeps going like this, almost like they couldn't get control of the, the thing. Like it was maybe malfunctioning and there's little gaps here and there. Like you can see the sword bend in the doorway at one point and stuff like that. But as ridiculous as it all is, it's just, I was sitting there just mesmerized by it still. And the whole thing with the, with the stop motion and when they tell the background of the story and, and all the stuff about Hiroku Saki and, you know, Hamato, Hamoto Yoshi and all this stuff that's still in there. And it's so faithful to the characters, to the original comic, to the cart. Like, there's just, there's a real love here that we just don't get anymore. We, or at least not often. Now, I mean, I love like the Cap movies and Avengers Endgame and Infinity War and all that stuff. But I mean, a lot of our stuff is just like just in general is just being tackled by people who don't care. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, even if they have things like Bebop and Rocksteady and like uh, Stedman, right? That's the f big fly, the Professor Fly guy or... And it, you know, like, even if those movies have that stuff and they go, well, we remember those characters, right? We saw a cartoon once. It's still just not the same. Like, you can just tell it's hollow and full and it has no soul. You watch this and this is full of it. Just full of soul, full of life and full of care for the characters and all the way they talk. It's goofy and silly, but they embrace it and it's incredible. And yeah, I would rather my kids see this than, than the new movies. Way more. Way, way more. And so, I mean, even though this is kind of a stretch for a Sam Rockwell thing, I just had, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to talk about it. And yeah, like the fight scenes are just, you know, they're guys in suits. What are you going to do? But like they did as much as they could with it. I think like all the one-liners and stuff really carried a lot of those action sequences. You were always so distracted with what they were saying that you kind of forget how the action really looks when you slow it down or when you just really look at it. I mean, come on, Shredder just barely does anything to them. Uh, he, he gets he gets the freaking uh, uh, Hans Gruber treatment. He gets the <laughs> he gets whipped around, which is hilarious, with the nunchuck over the side, and then tries to kill you know Splinter, and then ends up having to get let go and falls into the the garbage you know truck. And then Casey Jones supposedly kills him. But, like, it's, it's just all so great. And just, I remember, it reminds me of issue one of TMNT, man. It's just, I, I'm just so pleasantly surprised that this is all in there. And, and I know that a lot of people love this. And uh, I really thought I was going to hate this. Like, I thought this was going to be a chore. I thought I was going to be laughing at the movie. And instead, I was laughing with the movie. I was enjoying every bit of it. I mean, there's just the writing that they give them is so, like, would have been, like, I, I just laughed at things when I was 14 and 15 a lot of times. I wasn't, I was smart, but I wasn't, you know, as, as smart as the script was, joke, the jokes in the script were. And so, I don't know. This is the best Ninja Turtles movie, I, I can say that it is. And I, I didn't think I'd say that. Even with the modern ones, I'd be like, yeah, it's classic. And I always kind of just, when people talk about the difference, I just go, yeah, well, the first one's got to be better. And, but I was just kind of going off of really no context because I hadn't seen it in t over 20 years. But now I can say it without a, beyond a shadow of a doubt that Ninja Turtles holds up and it should be a, considered not just like a family classic, but a classic. I mean, I know people say, no, it is. It already is. But I mean, by the people who matter, or who supposedly matter, who put these things in like big lists, you know, the top most whatever movies. I hope this is on there somewhere, because if it doesn't, it deserves to be. Because honestly, looking back, everybody should be watching this for as far as like, how do you treat characters in this? 
Does do Donny and Mikey get really big arcs? Does anybody really? I mean, Ra this is kind of like Raph's movie. He's like the Wolverine, you know. Like, you can have the team of X Men, but you know that the the first few movies are just about Wolverine, and, the, and this one's just about Raph, pretty much. You get little hints at the other guys, but still, this is like the standard of like when s before somebody starts writing a fucking pop culture script for comic books or stuff that people really give a shit about. Watch this movie. They should be forced to watch this movie and, and, and watch, you know, like, or whatever you're going to do, or whatever you're going to adapt is what I'm saying. If, if you're going to adapt, let's say, I don't fucking know, uh, something that hasn't been done before. I'm looking around my room for stuff that hasn't been done before. Okay, so like a, a Black Widow movie that's coming out. There's, I have a, see a picture of Black Widow over there. Whoever does it needs to read up on the stuff, read up on the history, read up on the lore, look up on YouTube what fans talk about here and, and, and things like that and learn the stuff and care about the character or at least try to fake it better than they do. Because you can't fake this kind of, what all I can say is just, it was just a different time. And I honestly didn't remember this much care going into it. And I guess I had to grow up to see it. And appreciate it because at the time, you know, adults were all just like fucking Ninja Turtles. What the fuck is this neck? You know, well, guess what? Adults that were saying that back then, look at what the kids are doing now. Ninja Turtles is pretty fucking tame considering what's popular now. So, I mean, I, I'm not, I don't usually get this. Oh, that's not true. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to get this nostalgic about Ninja Turtles ever again. But I have a reason to now. I mean, I'm not going to suddenly just have everything plastered Ninja Turtles like I would have when I was a kid, but it's fun to say, like, let's, in the, okay, before we go, I want to talk about the soundtrack. When the, <laughs> I own this soundtrack, I listened to this soundtrack, and when, I, when he was giving the speeches about their origins, I remember that being on the fucking tape. And just, like, I'd never fast forward through it. I would always listen, a long time ago. We are in the sewer and just four baby turtles. <laughs> and then the TUR, the Turtle Power song, where it's like, I, I can't remember who does it, but it's a very recognizable voice just rapping about what was in the movie. That's what we used to do back in the day. Like the Ghostbusters did the same. Ghostbusters 2 had a rap that was like directly like everything that happens in the movie. So it's like, you know, the turtles are coming and they got Splinter and they got to go over here and fight. The it's just, oh my God, it's so glorious. It's so glorious. Oh my God. T-U-R-T-L-E power is damn right. All right. So everybody, if you like this review, please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, all that jazz. We will be back. With more Sam Rockwell month, the next movie is called The Search for One-Eyed Jimmy, where Sam plays the titular Jimmy. It's also got another cast of pretty famous uh, New York actors, so we'll be getting to that movie fairly soon. It came out in 1994, if anybody wants to look it up uh, to pre-kind of get what I'm talking about. Otherwise, this was Ninja Turtles. Holy shit, I'm finally talking about it, I guess, maybe. I guess I shouldn't say finally. It's one of those movies I don't think I ever thought about reviewing unless I had done this. So give it up to Sam Rockwell month for actually making me talk about something that I haven't talked about in fucking years. So this is Robert Smirking Gun Reviews saying have a great day and thrill power.